Hi, my name's Jay. I'm also known as the Seeker Kid on eBay. Uh, I've been selling on eBay since 1998. Uh, Part-time and uh, full-time. Uh, more full-time than part-time since then, but I also owned a retail store for 10 or 12 years, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, that'll be reopening again soon. I closed it down initially uh, because my son came along three years ago and uh, now he is starting school and so uh, I'm gonna have time to concentrate on the store again so I'm gonna do that. Uh, my wife who will not be in this video, uh, I wish she would but she isn't around right now, um, also is a reseller on eBay and she does Poshmark and I believe Etsy as well. I mostly concentrate on uh, collectible cards nostalgia, uh, comic books, um, t-shirts, basically anything along uh, the lines of like collectibles uh, and antiques and things like that. That's, that's mainly been my thing, dealing primarily in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Um, and I need you all to bear with me because this is my first video. Uh, I figured it all out as I go along and I figured that's the best way because that's how I've done everything in my life. Uh, what I did do recently was uh, go to my storage unit and started digging around and found some um, a lot of stuff that I completely forgotten about. Uh, when I closed this, sorry, when I opened the store uh, back in the early 2000s, I put um, a lot of things away, and one of the things I put away were all my old concert T-shirts uh, and vintage graphic tees mainly because uh, they weren't valuable back in the 2000s. Uh, most of them were from the late 1980s and early 1990s, and they were all concert shirts uh, that I had attended or friends had attended and gotten me the shirts themselves. So, uh, so what I'm gonna do is just go through some of these. Um, I did get a little bit excited uh, when I saw some of the values of these, and I immediately posted a few just to see what would happen on uh, eBay. Uh, so I don't have those ones with me anymore because those shipped uh, pretty much immediately. So um, I'm also on Instagram, but I did take pictures of those shirts and uh, they're up on Instagram uh, if you want to follow along there. It's The Seeker Kid as well, all one word, T-H-E-S-E-E-K-E-R-K-I-D, The Seeker Kid. I'm sure I'm going to be able to figure out a way how to put it up on the screen somehow, but yeah, I don't know that stuff yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, I've got two tubs right here uh, that I'm going to go through of most of the shirts. Um, some of it's pretty, pretty cool stuff. I've completely forgotten that I had it. So let's just get right into it. And uh, the first one is one of my favorite shoegaze bands, although they didn't consider themselves shoegaze band, uh, Swerve Driver. This is from the early... Uh, from the early 1990s. Uh, I don't know the exact date, um, but I did catch the show at the Corktown, a little pub in Hamilton that they came through and played. And uh, as you can see, it's a Anvil USA tag right there. Uh, it's a medium size. My God, I fit into things like this back then. That's not gonna happen anymore. Um, what I might do as well is put some of the, because I do have some of the uh, ticket stubs from these shows as well, and I might put those up on Instagram uh, for you guys to be able to see as well, so you can switch between that. Ooh, here's another great one. Um, Eric's Trip. Yeah. I was lucky enough to catch Eric's Trip uh, quite a few times, actually, um, and I can't exactly remember which show that I got this one at, uh, but it was at the early, uh, in the early 1990s. Um, and again, it was, uh, I think it was when they were touring with Sloan in jail, uh, and it was in Windsor. Um, this is a Fruit of the Loom extra large shirt. It's a little more my size now. And if you can see there, um, it is a single stitch sleeve, and I think it has a double stitch. No, it is a single stitch uh, bottom cuff as well, too, so indicative of 90s, um, the way they put together shirts back then. Um, I will probably at some point give a tutorial on um, how to be able to tell if something is truly vintage or not, uh, especially when it comes to shirts. There's no hard and fast rules, but there are a few things to look for. 
um, you know, things like single stitch cuff uh, and, and, you know, uh, places of manufacture and things like that. Uh, but I'll go over that some other time. Ooh, this is, yeah, this is a real nice one. Another shoegaze shirt, My Bloody Valentine. Um, this one was, I believe it's from, probably, I got it at university. So I was in university from like 90 to 94. And Loveless didn't come out until 92. So it was sometime between 92 and 94. Um, it is a uh, single stitch cuff and a uh, single stitch uh, bottom cuff as well. And it is a Fruit of Loom Extra Large. Just a really cool shirt. For, and I mean, My Bloody Valentine were like, well, still are one of my favorite bands, if not the favorite for the longest time. Speaking of favorite bands, a band that I followed around like a deadhead follows the dead. Spiritualized. Yeah, this is uh, the Electric Mainline shirt. This actually glows in the dark, which is really kind of cool. It has seen some life. It is a little bit distressed. There's a fair amount of holes. It's got some bleach uh, spots down there on the bottom. Um, but this one's really great. It is actually 1995 copyright spiritualized right there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the collar is a bit blown out there, as you can see. Um, but there it is. It's an all sport made in the USA shirt. Um, yeah, I saw Spiritualized. I, I don't even know how many times. Uh, I saw them in Detroit. I saw them in Toronto. I saw them in Montreal. I, I followed them around m multiple times. Um, uh, still one of my favorite bands. Um, I love Spaceman 3 and uh, Slow Dive and bands like that. Uh, I got to see Slow Dive's last show ever before they broke up, um, and that was in Toronto. Um, but unfortunately, I met the band, but unfortunately I didn't get any merchandise. I just got them to sign a CD, which I still have. Here's another great one. This is actually uh, a long sleeve. I don't know if I can get that in there or not, but it's a band called Codeine. Um, Codeine, I believe I got to see them in Detroit at St. Andrews Hall when I was going to school in the early 90s. Um, and uh, they opened for... I'm pretty sure it was Mozzie Star, and it might have been the Mekons at St. Andrews Hall. Um, again, I have the ticket somewhere. I'll dig it out and put it up on Instagram. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I, I lived in this shirt. This was one of my favorite shirts, and uh, pretty rare, apparently. I went online, and uh, there's not really much up there um, from Cody whatsoever. Um, it's a Just Say Rock brand, made in the USA. See that there? Yeah, okay. Um, and again, it's, you know, it's a little bit blown out, but that's, uh, I kind of, I think it adds to the character. Nice faded shirt. What else do we got? Ooh. Like, I'm seeing some of these for the first time, too. Uh, I haven't gone through this whole thing. Um, so it's kind of interesting for me. This one was, uh, the Red House Painters. Yeah, I saw them at, uh, I think it was Lee's Palace in Toronto. Um, and, uh... The music was incredible, but uh, Mark was kind of a bit of, not, not the nicest performer, um, which was a bit of a shame. Uh, you know, sometimes getting to see your heroes kind of let you down a little bit, but whatever, man. Um, it's good, great music, and uh, it was, like I said, it was, it was a good show, except for like one incident with a fan, which kind of sucked. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, Haynes, yeah. Adult Large BPT. It's uh, made in the USA. It's a single stitch from the early 90s. The bottom has a, a double stitch cuff on it, which uh, during during the 90s uh, that seemed to start showing up, um, usually around the mid to the end of the 1990s. So, uh, what else we got? <clears throat> oh yeah, Pavement. Another one from the 90s. I went and saw a lot of bands in the 90s. I mean, that's what I did. But uh, this one is uh, a play on the uh, PV uh, guitar amps, PV powered amps, had uh, something that looked graphically similar to this, and uh, it's a play on that, it's pavement powered. It is beat, I got holes in it there, um, all over the place. Again, this, this shirt saw some, some life. Um, the collar's a bit blown out here and there, but uh, still really cool. It's another USA one. Um, a Juanita Power Tea, if you can see that there. Yeah. And 
again single stitch uh, on both the uh, sleeves and on the uh, the bottom cuff too. Um, I can't. I did see them in Toronto. I just can't remember. I saw them a couple of times actually, but uh, I'm trying to think of which one again. Again, I've got the ticket stuff someplace. They'll all come out. Hmm. Folk implosion. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. One of Lou Barlow's side projects. Uh, they had, uh, I guess their biggest thing was they did a song for, um, it was on the, the kids movie soundtrack. Um, this one I actually didn't get at a show. Uh, I wasn't fortunate enough to go see them, but uh, I used to work uh, in record stores and every so often the labels would send us stuff. Um, and uh, this was one of the things I got, uh, which was pretty rad. Um, there is no label on it whatsoever, but it's a uh, single stitch on there, raglan, baseball style, um, and just uh, a great graphic from the uh, Dare to be Surprised, so uh, LP that they released. I think it was 92 or 93, but again, I'd have to double check on that. my memory. No, it would be after that. No, I'm not 100%. We'll figure it out later. It's the beauty of editing, so I've been told. <clears throat> ah, here's another... Rex. These guys were kind of like another slowcore band, uh, very similar to um, uh, Codeine in a way. In fact, I think the drummer from Codeine toured with Rex for a little while, but I could be wrong with that. I saw these guys at Lee's Palace, a uh, really great show. It's, this one is actually double-sided with a little almost Celtic-like graphic on the back. Single stitch cuff. Uh, single stitch sleeve and it is a made in the USA fruit a little in right there so yeah that's kind of cool oh yeah no this is a great one too um, another sort of post rock shoegaze band um, Bark Psychosis they're from the UK uh, I used to correspond with one of the guys who ran the uh, Che label which had some Spaceman 3 stuff on it, and I was a big Spaceman 3 fan. And um, he recommended Bark Psychosis to me and sent me an EP, and I loved it. Uh, and I bought everything they put out, and I managed to get the shirt. The only thing is, when it came from the UK, it's sort of printed slightly askew, so it was a bit of a, a weird one. Um, and the label is worn out of it, but it would have been the early 90s again, too. And it is, I think uh, that's MC Escher. I believe is the artist. That's a nice. Yeah, there you go. All right. Um, what other stuff do I have in here? Yeah, there's like a ton. Ooh, okay. I guess I'll bring out the grungier stuff. Um, there we go. So this one, um, in 1992, I saw um, the Lola Palooza tour. In two locations, Sutton Barry, which is north of Toronto, for those of you who aren't familiar with Canada whatsoever. Uh, and I went down in Charlotte, North Carolina, and happened to catch it there as well. And uh, I picked up this Soundgarden shirt. Now, this Soundgarden shirt is for the Bad Motor Finger Tour. It was the same one they used on the Bad Motor Finger Tour. Um, which is, this one has really, really faded. There used to be a white on top of that black. Um, and it is gone. It does have a copyright on there, 1992 so uh, Soundgarden under license to Brockham. Brockham was a huge um, uh, merchandise company for most of the bands. They did a lot of the tour shirts for pretty much all of the major bands. There's the uh, tag there. Um, that's an extra large one. It was double-sided, you know, they're really kind of, you know, walk around think you're a badass with all the fingers on the back. Uh, to be young and stupid. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, what is this one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I probably either I got this one at uh, there as well. It's a fairly common shirt, um, but it is from the 1990s. It's a Pearl Jam shirt. Uh, choices, right there, with the uh, on the back with nine out of ten kids um, prefer crayons to guns. Um, it's a cool little graphic. I always like that. Actually, I, I got to see Pearl Jam um, 
right at the early 90s, the very start. Again, I'll get the ticket, and I saw them uh, in Detroit. Uh, I think it was at the Fox Theatre. And, um, yeah, I think yeah, I got to see them at the Fox Theatre, and it was the Red Hot Chili Peppers with the Smashing Pumpkins and Pearl Jam opening. I don't even know if 10 had been released yet. It might have been released uh, a few weeks earlier, uh, but it was really early. The Pumpkins were still touring Gish, uh, and uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a pretty good show. It was really cool to see the, the three different bands. Um, but this one I think I actually got at the 1992 Lollapalooza tour, because um, they were playing with Soundgarden and um, Lush and Jesus and Mary Chain and Ministry, and yeah, it was all pretty good. But I think I'm going to cut it off there for now. Uh, I've got probably another 40 more shirts, but what I'm going to do is maybe put two or three of these up um, just as I go along and just, uh, because this is my first video, um, it's uh, probably going <laughs> to look amateurish, uh, but I figure the only way to really learn, just like anything, is just to dive right in and start doing it. So, um, if you could subscribe um, to my channel, that would be awesome. Um, if you have any pointers, uh, be as gentle as possible because uh, I, uh, you know, will break down and cry like a little girl. Anyways, I uh, hope you all have a good day, and I hope you all find some really cool stuff on your travels. See you later. I'm going to leave this part in where I'm fumbling with the...